Rutledge, member of the uncom- incomparable Marching 100. She's a fitness guru, having been involved with cheer and dance for many years. Please welcome to the show, Miss Dee Dee Ellis the First. What's going on, Dee? <laughs> Hi, Clark. Hi, Gail. Hi. I got such a rousing applause there. I love it. Man, well, you know, that's how we do <laughs> fellow fam Ewans. Hey, good to speak to you, lady, and, and I'm proud to have you on our show finally. Likewise, and I do appreciate the invite. Absolutely. Okay, um, we're going to jump right in here. Give us, give the listeners a little background on you, um, your commitment to fin- fitness, and, you know, some of the other things you've been involved with. Um, sure. I mean, I have actually been a certified personal trainer and fitness pro for about 15 years now. Um, I've always been involved in fitness in one way um, or another, uh, going back to, you know, being involved in track and a varsity cheerleader in, in high school and, as Clark mentioned, being a part of the world-famous Marching 100 in college. But uh, my most recent endeavor involved doing a fundraiser through the team and training program. And um, through that program, you compete in an endurance event while raising funds for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And and to me, it came about because, as I said, being such an aficionado of fitness and lover of um, being able to get out and, and take care of your body, for me, it was a great transition. It's just a matter of using the blessing of good health and the abilities that we have to kind of do something to give back to people who aren't as fortunate or who don't have the same healthy status that um, we have. So it was a great fit for me to kind of take in my background in cheering as a pro cheerleader as well as um, dance and, and fitness and exercise and use all of that to challenge myself, go to the next level by doing a marathon and give back to um, a community of people who desperately need the financial and um, mental support there. So so when did you actually take the, the charge to bring, you know, an awareness to leukemia and lymphoma, you know, for those who suffer from it? Mm-hmm. Um, I had, as a, um, a person who would dabble in running, you go to different running events and um um, fitness fairs for runners expos, that's what they call them. And you know, I'd always see the team and training group there talking about the program and, and, you know, had said it was something that I wanted to become involved in. But it really took on a personal nature for me when our, my sister and I, we lost our aunt uh, about, wow, it's been, it was 2005, in mid 2005, our aunt Evelina Moore passed away from um, leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, um, several different blood diseases. And what was really interesting was the fact that um, this happened within a year of her being diagnosed. So it was very quick quick as far as her decline and um, subsequent demise to the diseases. So it became more personal for me then at that point, Gail. I mean, I really could see how these diseases affect individuals as well as their families. And um, from that point, I knew I actually wanted to do more than think about participating in the program. I really wanted to do it. So um, at at that point in time, I was cheering with the Arena Football League team that we have here in in Jacksonville, Florida, Um, the Sharks, who just won the championship last year, I might add. But um, And that is – it takes up so much time. Um, but um, since that time, I've moved more into coaching cheerleaders instead of being on the field, and that's afforded me a little more time. So this was a perfect opportunity. Sort of the stars were all in alignment for me to get involved in this program. Yeah. 